Today we will see how dantrolene works as an antidote for succinylcholine. Succinylcholine is one of a skeletal muscle relaxant which produces a side effect like the malignant hyperthermia. So here the malignant indicates a, an abnormal which is very severe form and hyperthermia there is a raise in the body temperature. So succinylcholine can produce in an abnormal raise in the body temperature and should be immediately treated in order to prevent the further complications. The succinylcholine acts on the skeletal muscle and within the skeletal muscle it acts on the sarcoplasmic reticulum and by activation of the skeletal muscle the calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum by the succinylcholine and once this calcium is released with into the cytoplasm it results in the contraction of the skeletal muscle. In this way, succinylcholine increases the contraction of the skeletal muscle which results in the heat generation and abnormal raise in the body temperature. Now what is the role of this dantrolene? So let us see in this video how this dantrolene acts as an antidote for the succinylcholine induced malignant hyperthermia. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for getting notifications on more interesting videos. First of all, what is succinylcholine? Succinylcholine is also called as succinylcholine and it is one of a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. And this succinylcholine can act as an agonist on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors which are present on the skeletal muscle. And these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are inotropic receptors. When they are activated, they produce the muscle contraction. But succinylcholine produce muscle contraction initially which is followed by muscle relaxation. Succinylcholine activates these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors for a prolonged time and because of this prolonged action it produces the muscle paralysis. As the succinylcholine repeatedly activates the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors it produces the muscle paralysis. In this way succinylcholine acts as a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. But because of the frequent muscle contractions Calcium is more released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum which can raise the body temperature by generation of the heat. Now let us turn about the dantrolene. What is dantrolene? Dantrolene is a skeletal muscle relaxant. Here it is very interesting thing is that succinylcholine is also produced the muscle relaxation as well as dantrolene also produces the muscle relaxation. And dantrolene is used as an antidote for the succinylcholine. This is just because even both are skeletal muscle relaxants, their target of action is different. Due to this, dantrolene can block the malignant hyperthermia caused by succinylcholine. And this drug blocks the rhinodine receptors present on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, thereby it controls the release of the calcium. In this way, dantrolene blocks the muscle contraction by inhibiting the calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Structure of dantrolene. Dantrolene is chemically having the structure like this and we can identify one of the ring system here. This is the hydantoin ring. We can observe few of the drugs having the hydantoin ring like the phenytoin. Phenytoin is a one of an anti-epileptic drug. But here dantrolene is a skeletal muscle relaxant. And this hydantoin ring is attached with an amino group at the first position. So it is a one amino hydantoin which is attached with the furfuryliding ring system. So this furfural forms a conjugation with 1-amino hydantoin, so it produces a furfuryliding linkage within the dantrolene. This furfuryliding chain is going to be attached with a paranitrophenyl group at the fifth portion of the furfural. Now let us see how it acts as an antidote for the succinylcholine induced malignant hyperthermia. Succinylcholine, as already we have seen, it acts as a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker, so it acts on the skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is equipped with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors which are inotropic receptors. So these receptors are coupled with the ion channels. And when the succinylcholine binds to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, these ion channels are going to be activated which results in the entry of sodium into the skeletal muscle. And this sodium can produce the depolarization of the skeletal muscle. In this way, succinylcholine produces a depolarization of the skeletal muscle. And when the skeletal muscle is depolarized, it activates the sarcoplasmic reticulum and sarcoplasmic reticulum is equipped with a few of the receptors like the rhinodine receptors. And when the skeletal muscle is uh, depolarized, these rhinodine receptors are activated and they release the calcium 
through these uh, rhinodin receptors. So in this way, calcium is released into the cytoplasm by depolation of the skeletal muscle. And the released calcium then can produce a contraction of the skeletal muscle. So this is an excitation contraction coupling where the excitation caused by the succinyl choline produces a depolarization of the skeletal muscle which results in the release of the calcium from the rhinodin receptors resulting in the contraction of the skeletal muscle. Now here the dantrolene plays an important role. Dantrolene breaks this linkage between the excitation and contraction coupling. This drug is going to act as an antagonist on the rhinodin receptors thereby it inhibits the release of the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when there is no sufficient release of the calcium, the muscle is not contracted, thereby the heat generation can be prevented by the dantrolene. Since succinyl choline produces an abnormal release of the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum which produces a sudden raise in the body temperature, dantrolene can act as an antidote in the situations where succinyl choline induces the malignant hyperthermia in the patients. Here the purpose of this dantrolene is used to antagonize the action of the succinyl choline on the malignant hyperthermia but it is not used to prevent the action of the succinyl choline. How it is given? Dantrolene we have seen is one of an hydantoin derivative and it is a lipophilic drug because of this it is having the poor water solubility. So dantrolene is combined with the mannitol, mannitol can increase the water solubility of the dantrolene. As this drug is used as an antidote it is given as an IV infusion. And the powder used for the reconstitution includes 20 mg of dantrolene and 3 grams of the mannitol. And this combination should be dissolved in the 60 ml of the sterile water for injection then IV infusion solution can be prepared. And one of the important thing here is that the pH should be maintained at the 9.5 by addition of the sufficient amount of the NaOH to prevent any tissue irritation at the site of infusion. Side effects. Just we have seen that dantrolene is a muscle relaxant. It produces a muscle relaxation. Due to this, the side effects are also related with the muscle relaxation. So patients can observe loss of grip strength and some muscle weakness by use of this dantrolene. And it can also produce few other central side effects like the dizziness and drowsiness in the patients. And one of the important side effects are mainly the infusion site reactions. As we have seen that uh, it can produce some tissue irritation and pH should be maintained at the 9.5. Whenever dantrolene is given by IV infusion, it can produce one of the conditions like phlebitis. Phlebitis is a inflammation of the veins at the site of injection. And it can also produce some tissue necrosis. If accidentally the drug is given extravascularly, then it can produce some tissue necrosis. And few of the rare side effects of dantrolene include abdominal cramps, constipation and anorexia, loss of appetite. Finally, when dantrolene is used for a prolonged use, it can produce some hepatotoxicity. So hepatotoxicity is not observed for a short term use, on prolonged use, uh, dantrolene can have a risk of hepatotoxicity. Where it is used? Just we have seen in the treatment of malignant hyperthermia, dantrolene can be used, particularly the malignant hyperthermia caused by succinyl choline or general anesthetics like the halothane, in such situations, the dantrolene can be used as an antidote. And apart from this use, dantrolene can also be used in the treatment of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a similar syndrome like the malignant hyperthermia, which also accompanies with a, a sudden raise in the body temperature and mental retardation and confusion in the patients. This syndrome is mainly caused by neuroleptics like uh, chlorpromazine. So in such situations, again, this uh, dantrolene can be used to control the normal rise of the body temperature. And dantrolene can also be used in the spasticity, muscle spasm, which produces muscle contraction, where the muscle is in the contractile position. In such situations, again, dantrolene can be used as a skeletal muscle relaxant. And finally, dantrolene can be used in the conditions like the elevated body temperature, such as heat stroke. In the heat stroke, there is an abnormal rise of the body temperature along with few of the skeletal muscle contractions where the dantrolene can control the skeletal muscle contraction thereby it prevents the further heat generation. In this way, dantrolene is one of a specific antidote for treatment of the malignant hyperthermia produced by succinyl choline. It can also be used to treat the malignant hyperthermia caused by general anesthetics like the halothane as well as the neuroleptic malignant syndrome caused by chlorpromazine and if you have the spastic conditions as well as the heat stroke in all these situations 
the dantrolene can be used. So one of the main action of the dantrolene is to block the rhinodine receptors present on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, thereby it controls the release of the calcium, thereby it prevents the skeletal muscle contraction. When the skeletal muscle is not contracted, heat cannot be produced, so abnormal rise in the body temperature can be controlled. So that's about the dantrolene which acts as an antidote for succinyl choline. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.